welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I like to paint vehicle armor for Forge Phobos. Today, whoever you are, and welcome to episode three of uh, Painting Forge Phobos, the painting series where I'm going to be unveiling all the secrets, all the tips and tricks for painting the color scheme for my Adeptus Mechanicus army, Forge Phobos, the Cult of Fear. So I've got a model here. This is the Archmagos Belisarius Call himself, and the idea of these painting series is is that I do one for every faction that I have and uh, I try and pick a nice a really interesting model, a really cool model that's got, um, that's got a lot going on, a lot of different features, a lot of variety it basically gives you a really good representation of all the different aspects, all the different features that you might find in the in the colour scheme of my of my, of my faction and I, I split the series up into episodes and focusing on a different different point in the colour scheme each time and if you watch the whole series from start to finish well then you'll also get to see a, a model a really cool model painted from start to finish as well and so here we are this is episode 3 and uh, we've had episode 1 which is bionics so I painted all the all his metal arms and mechadendrites and limbs and cables piping and all this brass armour plating as well and in episode 2 we did the Skitari robes these lovely grey robes here with little fleshes of flecks of purple in there and in this episode what we're going to do we're going to focus in on the vehicle armor so what that's going to mean is all all the all the armor that you might expect to find on something like a like an onaga doom crawler or a castellan robot perhaps or um so i'm going to be showing you how i paint that in the color scheme of forge phobos and belisarius here he doesn't have a lot of that going on but he what he does has does have is this sort of mechanical arc claw thing on the side here and he's also got this little scaraby spidery mechadendrite on the floor there and so I'm gonna paint I'm gonna paint up those in the same way in the same fashion that I would do vehicle armor but not only that we've also got this uh, Skitari emblem on the back here this little cog emblem with the with the skull the black and white emblems there so I'm gonna be painting that too show you how to do that there's one up here on the axe as well and I'm also gonna be Showing you how to do transfers as well. Transfers, they, I do do quite a lot of those in my Skitari army, so I'll be trying to work out where I can put one of those and show you how to do that too. Well, it's cold and lonely here in Winter Wizard's Frozen Fortress, but it's, um, it's a beautiful overcast day and uh, I've got a lovely cup of coffee over there, Kepri Roast, and I'm joined as always by my friend and co-host, Norwegian Troll, Dibu. So. This is going to be nice, it's going to be nice and relaxed. I'm going to walk you through this process and um, we'll see what you think from there. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you what paints we're going to need and any other bits and tools that we might want to use as well. So first off we've got Dawnstone, nice layer grey here, lovely colour. Same colour as the robes, we do the armour in that as well. And we'll need some Agrax Earthshade, nice wash. A little bit of lead belcher for some chipping effects. And for the emblems, we're going to need a nice white, Korax white, it's my favourite. Some Abaddon black as well. And I think that's just about it. And then for applying the transfers, well, we're going to need a, a transfer sheet, but we'll get onto that in a little bit. Some PVA glue as well. Here we are then, so we've zoomed in, we're going to get started here. And got my paint palette. Got a brush here. It's actually a Citadel starter brush. Uh, would you believe? Uh, it's actually my favourite brush. Any sort of little base or layer brush will do nicely. And we're going to start with a Dawnstone. Give that a good shake. And if you can hear a little clicking noise there, well, what that is is buy these little ball bearings here, five millimeter stainless steel ball bearings. Stainless steel so they don't rust. And you can pop one of those in each in, in your pots of paint. And they really, really, really help with uh, keeping them nice and mixed and, and fluid. So really strong. I re really would recommend you do that. Got a little bit of blue tack here. Just to stick the pot down so they don't move. Don't knock over. And I've got a little bit of um, 
just a little paint, old paint cap, paintbrush cap like so, just to, just to keep the lid open. So we're going to get started here. But yeah, so the piece we're going to paint is this art, this like mechanical art claw thing on the side here. So there's a little bit in the plating here, and and this little spiny mechadendrite down here as well. But we'll start with the claw. Let's moisten up the brush. If your paint's looking a little bit thick or a little bit gloopy, I would suggest just take a little bit of water. Drop a little bit of that in there. Give it a shake. And when you open it up, it should be nice and fluid. It should be smooth and be able to just run off the lid, run off the cap there. You really will notice the uh, the difference in the finishing result if you um, if you get good at keeping your paints treated. Just thin down. Right, anyway, so we're going to start here. We're going to we're going to start. I'll start on the edges on the claws there. I'm just going to fill all those in. Just sort of paint what you think. Um, what you think what you think makes sense if you are painting this model uh, if you're doing what I'm doing right now so he's got like these uh, little tubes joining the ends of the claws I'm not going to paint those I'm going to keep those silver but the claw head itself I'm going to paint that just working around this Underneath. Lovely. And we're going to paint um, a little bit in there. Just the main sort of body of the claw, really. The main mechanical body. I did uh, threw the box away, actually, rather annoyingly. But um, it's a good look at this on the on the box. Or you could go to their GW website. If you find the models on there, they uh, they normally have those little 360 showcase spin around things that you can look at. So um, just where you would buy the model, scroll through the images, and there's an option to turn the model around, get a good look at all the angles. This works to be quite a good painting reference, actually. Let's see what I mean. But I'm just going to paint most of this what looks to be like thick plating, thick sort of main mechanical body of it so I'll, uh, I'll finish up here and then we'll, um, we'll come back and I'll show you what I've done here we are, so we've uh, done a first coat on all those different bits uh, you can see his claw there looking a bit grey now down here on the floor this little scarab Mechadendrite spidery thing. It's uh, I've left the legs, but everything else I've painted grey. So all the all its sort of body and casing and that sort of ball inside it. I've actually uh, painted the grey, some grey armor plating in here on his solar atomizer as well, just to give you something else to see there. And this little um, and this little face face cuff, face plate thing here as well. Done it on there appreciate this is not a vehicle model and uh, I'm trying my best to give you as much to look at and I assure you the uh, the technique that we are going to be doing here is exactly the same uh, as I would be doing on a on a on a vehicle yeah that, that was the trickiest part about finding a model for this series it was one that was going to compass everything but um, I think there's enough to work with here and uh, as I just said the technique is exactly the same just repeat this on a on a larger scale but the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to give that a second coat so make it a nice strong coat build it up a uh, couple of thin layers give that all those armor pieces a nice solid stark foundation so we'll do another coat 
we'll let it dry and then uh then we'll move on there we are so we've given it another nice strong coat of the gray and it's looking like a nice solid color now and it's just about dry so we're going to move on we're going to apply some washes now agrax earth shade so the trick with the um, well, the, the armor and the robes are the same color. Well, we want to dis we want them to be distinguishable. And the way we do that is we try and give the the armor a, a darker, dirtier sort of feel. The robes um, we we did a nice highlight with uh, with a nice lighter gray, as you can see there. I'm not really going to do that with the armor. I'm just going to create a nice strong, solid gray. Then we're going to give it a nice thorough coat of agrax. See, uh, on the rose, we apply just a little bit of that into the into the cracks, but on the armor, we're going to cover it. Give it a nice wash. Work that into the details, so all the cracks and crevices, and give it a nice shaded look. And there we go. So we're going to give it a nice wash. Really darken that down. Move down here to the scarab. Let that sit in all those details. You see just how it makes all the sculpting pop as well. This really brings all the uh, all the shape to life. Like so. This is going to really help to sort of distinguish the the armor as well. If you are painting small amounts of it, um, like on Belisarius here, the washes really do help to distinguish distinguish the sculpt. They really are great. So we've done that, and obviously the art claw here. Not forgetting this little plate that we've done here. Poke some of that in there. Just allow that to really sit up against the, the brass colours. All over there. But there you go, so you can see it's nice and dark now, the grey. It's a nice different sort of shade to to the to the cape, but um but the same base colour, if that makes sense. So, um, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to bring a little bit of that grey back to life. So we've got the Dawnstone back out here, and I've got a nice sort of layer brush here. Uh, a nice fine point. And we're going to reintroduce some of that grey back to, back to the armour. And so the way we're going to do this... You can see ridges, details, like these raised areas here. Now the wash is nice and has sat nicely around it, giving it a nice sort of dark outline. So the idea is we're not going to paint over every inch of the grey again. What you're going to do, you're just going to sort of paint you're going to return the sort of shape of the of it back but you see how I've left the Left those darker areas shaded still. That's the idea. Well, maybe that seems really obvious to seasoned painters, but um, I must admit, when I first started painting again, that wasn't actually that obvious to me. And I was always a bit confused why are we painting over every inch of what we've just painted? And that's not really what you're doing. You're just painting over the main sort of body and shape of it. You're not really covering all those cracks and details and going up to all the ridges and stuff. You're leaving that nice and shaded. And for example, this uh, plate here with the brass trim on it. So I'm going to apply a little bit of the grey back in there. And again, what we're doing is just sort of paint the main shape without pushing all the way up to those, those edges. And details just like so and 
And if the paint's nice and smooth, it should blend together nicely and it's going to leave those areas nice and shaded. Yeah, so I'm going to go around and start picking out some of these plates again. Bringing a little bit of that grey back to it. Whilst leaving the... Whilst leaving the shading. Like so. So I'm going to go around and do that now and we'll come back and show you how it's gone. There we are, so I've layered a little bit of the Dawnstone back onto the onto all the armor and I hope you can see that this sort of subtle but there is a difference between there between the sort of style style of the cape here and the vehicle armor as well it's the same gray when it's a little bit darker it's a bit darker a bit dirtier painted in a slightly different style and that's just a case of just a, a good a good wash with this with the shade with the Agrax earth shade and when you sort of layer the colors back on top of that Obviously you avoid the sort of recesses and the sharpest, the sharpest corners and things. Um, but also applying the layer back onto that shaded grey. It's going to give it a sort of darker undertone. And just a different feel. And what else we're going to do, we're going to pick out, uh, we're going to bring out the silver. And we're going to do a little bit of sort of a chipping effect. A sort of an armour, sort of a painted armour feel where it's been battered and beaten. And bits of a paint of sort of chipped off and things. Uh, what else we're also going to do is I did forget to mention that we're going to need um, we're going to need some screamer pink because like with the like with the purple inlay of the cape I like to add a little bit of purple to to the armor sometimes uh, in this sort of in the fashion of sort of like ornamental streaks, strips and lines like on the side of a tank like a big sort of painted strip with a transfer on it or something like that uh, so in the case of Belisarius here what we're going to do I'm thinking this this little plate here this little plate here with a sort of armoured rim nice and thin, nice and smooth this paint needs to be when you're doing this get a nice smooth finish, you don't want a clumpy finish this is just going to take a steady hand, so both hands flat on the desk. Nice grip of the model. Sort of have both hands positioned and resting, so the only thing that's moving really is the brush like so. And we're going to just give a sort of visual guide of where you want it to be. So I'm thinking just either side of these, just either side of this little, it's like a little cross thing that's going on, this little ornamental cross, and going straight up and down. So I'm going to start at the top, just bring a little bit of line in there, just sort of come down, and then poke it into the poke it underneath there. And it's not really straight at the moment, but that's okay. Just work slowly, get a bit of a guide for yourself first, so I'll start that on the other side as well. You just gently start filling in the colour. But yeah, so it's not looking bad. I'm going to straighten that up just a little bit. If you can find a sort of guide on the model somehow, for example, like this little corner here, just on the edge of that corner, and I'll be my guide, and I want it to come straight down. like so and just carefully fill it in and try that round the other side as well so I'm going to come out just a little bit mm -hmm. you can do smudge the paint as well, you can quickly rinse the brush out make sure there's no paint in it and with it slightly wet just scrub over where you've made a mistake you can normally get rid of it if you're quick but yeah that's not too bad I think not too bad so what we're going to do is let it dry and apply a little bit more paint to it and then what we're going to do we're just going to get the dawnstone back sort of just 
very carefully correct up those, straighten up those sides a little bit on either side. Well, that's the general idea. Find a bit of a guide, top and bottom, and just very carefully, nice, thin, smooth paint. Draw your lines on either side, color it in, just work it up to the edge nice and slowly. And if you need to correct it with, uh, with the other color on either side, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. There we are then, so I've corrected it with a little bit of Dawn Stone on either side, try to make it just as straight as possible. Uh, I had to touch up a little bit of the brass again, just for a mistake, but take your time if you're doing anything like that. Uh, but I think it's a nice feature, uh, it's something that does feature a fair bit on my, on, my, uh, on my vehicles in my army, so just thought I'd show you that as well. And what you can do now is that we've been touching it up with some bold colours again. Uh, I would say run a little bit of wash, just a little bit of Agrax Earthshade. Earth run a little bit of that over the top of it. Um, just to blend it in, blend the two colours in a bit together. And to give that purple a slightly different, slightly dirtier, darker feel to the uh, to purple that you might see on the cape and things like that. So run a little bit of wash over that. And then we're going to start looking at some chipping effects. So moving on now, we're going to do some chipping effects and got the lead belcher here which is a nice, nice strong silver and what this is going to be, it's just going to be a subtle effect really it's, um, the idea is just where bits of paint on the armour have chipped off, flecked off it just sort of breaks up the breaks up the paint as well and gives it a bit more of a war-torn sort of more of a natural sort of appearance perhaps so let's take this claw for example if we look at the claw tips there and we've got a nice fine detail brush here not overloading the brush here not at all there's not a lot of paint on there at all but uh, just enough and just sort of jotting along the sharpest edges just little scrapes and scratches, perhaps. So like on the tips of the claw here, you can just sort of, just along the edges, the sharpest points, I say is a good place to start. And that's just where, where the metal has been battered and chipped. And all I'm doing is just sort of tapping and scraping a little bit of paint, a little bit of the silver along those edges. There's little dri dribs and dots and... I want to go overboard with this, it's um, supposed to be subtle. I think it does, it does look good, it's sort of a weathered, weathered appearance. And it's another thing that's going to distinguish it between that and the, and the cape. As this is metal and the cape is fabric. Little scratch lines is a good one. Um, where you think it might be rubbing against if there's another sort of piece of piece of metal or something or piece of armor near it. If you think there might be a bit of occasional scraping or friction there, it's good to Fill in a little bit of the silver there where the paint has come off. So we'll put some on here, the sharp edge here. Just using the sort of um, the long edge of the brush. Just to tap a little bit of that along the top of that rim there. Like so. We'll put a little bit underneath. Just a couple of scrapes. Maybe put a bit more around the um, around these grabbing claws because that's where they're going to be picking up a lot of stuff and taking a lot of wear and tear. And we'll move around. A little face, face thing there. A little cluster of dots, perhaps. Something's. Something scraped against, whacked against it. Okay. 
some flecks of rubble or something. Any raised areas that might have taken a knock on like a vehicle, corners, feet, um, impact points, you know. Use your own discretion really, but uh, it's just a subtle feature. Sort of but effective I think. So I'm going to put a little bit on this bug, on this mechadendrite down here and then, uh, and then we'll move on. There we are then, so we've done some chipping effects and that's the vehicle armour finished. Um, there it is, nice grey dawnstone armour. The same colour but uh, darker, different with chipping, more wash um, than the robes. Uh, and you would find that sort of a f technique on all the, all, the, all the vehicles that I do. Doom crawlers, breaches, dragoons, that sort of stuff. And a nice ornamental purple stri purple stripe there. And the chipping effects of... Uh, so we're going to move on now. We've got a couple of other things to show you in this video. These are uh, emblems on the back here. The white and black Mechanicus Cog emblems. There's a few of those around, so I'll quickly show you how to do that. And then we're going to uh, stick a little transfer on the top of that scarab down there. So we're going to do the cogs now. We're going to need two colours for this. We've got Abaddon Black and we've got Gorax White. Uh, those, will be, those will be the two colours we need. And if you look at the box art or anything like that, you can see there's one there on top of his axe. And the way we're going to paint it, if you, you've got the two parts, two main parts of this emblem, you've got the cog on the outside and the skull in the middle. But if you separate that into four parts, working from left to right, you've got half a cog, half a skull, half a skull, half a cog and you're going to alternate the colours as you go start with white, then black, then white, then black so half a cog in white, half a skull in black, half a skull in white, half a cog in black so you want to make sure you've got nice smooth paints on the go here don't want them runny because they'll run all over the place but nice and smooth so that they flow off the brush we'll start with white, just got a nice fine detail brush here Gonna load some of that up on the brush and you're just gonna gently just gently pick out that first left cog. I tend to just start at the bottom. You sort of just painting half of that bottom piece. And then just sort of gently taking your time, just blotting the paint, just dabbing it onto those cogs dabbing it letting it run off the brush if the paint's nice and smooth and then it shouldn't be a problem there we go and while we've got some white on the brush we'll pick out the right hand side of the skull and some of these sculpts very handily have a nice line like this one does you to paint up to. See that? Quite like a sculpted line in the center. Just makes things nice and easy. So there's the two white pieces done. Make sure that's lovely and dry before you start trying to put the black in there. If you accidentally touch it, then it'll mix, it'll run, it'll create, create quite a mess. So let that dry nice and fully. And then go back and do the black. And there we go, so I filled in the black and I've gone round and done all the done all the other ones as well. Two on his axe. And it's just about being patient, steady hand, and with the when you come in and doing the cog on the on the black side, uh, you want to sort of get the tooths, the two cog teeth, top and bottom, they're supposed to be half and half, half white, half black. Uh, so you just gotta be try and be as neat as you can and if you make a mistake just let it dry and then go back over and adjust it with the white until you get a nice smooth smooth segment like so and those are the icons that's how you do them so we're gonna next thing we're gonna do we're gonna have a look at doing a transfer and then that'll be it so we've got our tools ready here for for doing a transfer we've got some PVA glue that's gonna help the transfer we're gonna mix that with some water and that's gonna help the sort of layer that down put the transfer on top and it's going to help it stick nice and nice and firmly 
little bit of water here to, for the transfer itself and for the glue, an old brush, sharp knife and uh, some tweezers, not essential but if you have them it does help. Now we did, we, we just had a go at trying to do a transfer on this little little bug down here. But it's, um, but the part is so round, so rounded, it's like a ball. It proved to be really difficult to get a nice smooth finish on the transfer. So um, I've had a little think and I've worked out, so we're going to try and put one somewhere else. So I'm going to show you that now. Right, so it's not exactly really where I wanted to, where I wanted to put a transfer, but I want to be able to show you how, how I do it. Oh, yeah, they're quite a prominent feature in my um, Adeptus Mechanica, Mechanica's army. I do use them a lot, so I want to be able to show you how it's done. So I've noticed a nice space here. It seems pretty flat, and I might try and stick something just there. I've got, um, got a nice sheet here. There's some, uh, some white Tech Priest sigils down here. But, uh, so I'm going to choose one of those, I think, and try and stick that um, in that little, that little section just there. So I'm going to have a think about which one I want to use, and then, uh, and then I'll show you how we do that. Yeah, so I think we've decided on, uh, I might go for one of these black ones, a bit easier for you to see. And they look a bit like a C. C for call, that'll do. So I'm just going to zoom out so you can sort of see a little bit better for now, but we'll zoom in closer as I'm sticking it down so you can get an idea of what's going on. But well, um, I'm going to cut this out. Just a nice square cut around it. And lift that off. And this is where tweezers come in handy. Pick that up. And see it there? Yeah, we can dunk that in the water. Don't let go of it, but and then just drop that down right there. And the water is then going to lift the transfer off of the paper. And while we're doing, while it's doing that, a little bit of PVA glue in the palette there, just a smidge, and with an old brush, a little bit of water. I'm just going to mix that up. A nice smooth sort of smooth sort of paste. You don't want it clumpy and gloopy, just a nice smooth consistency really. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that and we're gonna apply that mixture onto the surface of where we want the transfer to go, nice and smooth. There we go, and this is just going to give it a little extra stick. It's just going to help the transfer just sit in place a little bit better. So just a little bit of that glue on there. There we go. So we've applied a little bit of glue onto there, and then the transfer is just down there. We're going to use the sharp knife just to lift. You should see it starting to lift up as the water does its thing. I'm just going to get that onto the knife. Like so. See it there? And then we're going to slide that off and apply it onto the area we want it to go. I'm just going to stick that on there. I'm just using the sharp tip of the knife just to straighten it up, just to manipulate it, move it around. Being careful, you don't want to tear it or slice it, but um, it's the easiest way to move it around, I find. And once you're happy with the position, uh, just leave it alone. Stop messing with it. and. Uh, let it dry, let it settle, and then we're going to come back to it. And there we go then, I appreciate it, it's only small, but there's a transfer for you. It's a sort of little point of detail there. And what I would also suggest, we don't have to, but uh, get a little bit of matte varnish. Vallejo, they do nice little bottles of matte varnish. Just a tiny little drop of that. And I would say, once the transfer is dry, just smooth a little, little coat of this over the top of it. That's all you need. Now the transfers, sometimes they come out a little shiny. So this will help with that. But what it'll also do is, it'll give it a nice cover of protection as well. And to stop it from coming off or to being torn or 
ripped or anything like that. So there you go, put a little bit of matte varnish over there if you like, just for a bit of protection, just to take off that sheen. And if I had this on some armor, uh, then what I might do is maybe add a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade or some uh, some chipping over the top of the transfers as well, just to blend them in a bit. But that's it, that's all we're going to be looking at today. There's, uh, we've done the vehicle armor, the vehicle style grey armor for Forge Phobos. So you've got it all on the, on the claw here uh, with the little purple decorative strip, which is just the base color of grey with some wash and a little bit of layering and some chipping effects. Just, uh, and then we also did the cogs. There they are. The Mechanicus emblems. Up there on the axe. In there too. And I showed you how to do a, a wee transfer as well. And there we go. Ah, oh, there we go then. So that was episode three in Painting Forge Bobos, where in this episode we had a little look at uh, how to paint vehicle armor, Mechanicus emblems, and we even did a transfer as well. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I hope this video has been a, been a help to you. And uh, if you haven't checked out the other episodes in the series, I hope you'll go and do that as well. Coming up next time in episode four, we're going to be having a look at all the shiny bits. So plasma and radium and eye lenses and screens and anything that glows, basically. We're going to be painting all of that up. And um, Belisarius will then be well over halfway finished. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video today, then a, a like and a comment would be very, very much appreciated. And if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the Frozen Fortress, then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber. And once again, whoever you are, thank you very, very much for joining me today. I'm Winter Wizard, that's Dimu, and for now, keep it frosty.